Zero factorial equals one. Why? Well, because zero is excited. That makes no sense at all. A pretty typical way to introduce the factorial is to say, start with some natural number, like four for example, and then count down to one. Four, three, two, one. The product of those four natural numbers is what we call four factorial. Factorials have all kinds of interesting properties. Five factorial, which of course would be five times four times three times two times one, is itself the same as five times four factorial, since we can see the four times three times two times one right there in its definition. It would appear as if we really can't evaluate what zero factorial is using this definition because zero is not a natural number. We can't count down to one beginning at zero. So we might presume the best thing to do is to say, well, there's just no such thing as zero factorial. But in fact, there are lots of situations when we're doing what are called combinatorics, where we're counting up different possible outcomes, where zero factorial comes into play. Whether it's the formula for permutations or the formula for combinations, we we often need to be able to compute zero factorial, or at least have a value for it. You might also think, well, since the factorial is all about products, anything involving a product and zero should be zero, so should we just call zero factorial zero? And the answer is no, it's actually best to call zero factorial one, to assign the value of one to zero factorial. There are several reasons for this, but my favorite is a kind of intuitive way to understand what the factorial is doing for us. Consider something like three factorial. Three factorial, of course, is three times two times one or six. But what three factorial is really doing for us is giving us the number of ways to arrange three different elements. Imagine we had a set A, B, C, and we wanted to figure out how many different ways are there to place A, B, and C in different orders or arrangements. We could of course go A, B, C, but we could just as easily switch up the B and the C and go with A, C, B. But for that matter, there's no special reason we have to start with A. We could start with B instead and go B, A, C, or we could again switch up the A and the C and have B, C, A instead. Finally, of course, we could begin with C instead, and then we could either go C, A, B, or switch it up to C, B, A. But you can see that there are six such arrangements. This also gives us a great way to understand just why it is four factorial is the same as four times three factorial. For every single one of these arrangements of A, B, C, if I added on a fourth element and wanted to know, well, how many ways are there to arrange A, B, C, D, all I have to do is pick one of four different places that D could go. So I've got six different arrangements, any one of which could have four different placements for D, and it's that four times six or four times three factorial that gives me back the 24 different ways to arrange four elements. For a set with two elements, of course, there are only two possible arrangements, A and then B, or B and then A. And for a set with just one element, A, there's only one way to arrange it, A. But for a set with zero elements, a set we call the empty set, you can imagine there is in fact exactly one way to distinctly arrange the elements of the empty set. Here it is. You're looking at the one and only way to arrange nothing. Now, although I think this is a nice way to give an intuition to what zero factorial is, the ultimate answer is zero factorial is one because we say it is. Because when we multiply a bunch of stuff together and we otherwise have an empty product, a product with no elements, the result of that is always one. This is the same reason why things raised to the zero power are, generally speaking, one. So there you have it, zero factorial equals one because we say so, but in a more satisfying way because there is one way to arrange nothing.